This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by a Porto Chicken. Fresh, not frozen. Grilled, not fried. Crown and Andrews board games. Fun for the whole family. And Scoot Airlines. Get out of here with Scoot. I wish we could get out of here, but it's been snowing outside and it's winter here in Western Australia. Ben Eilert is with us from Easy Wireless. What have you got for us today? Well, we have got some little smart earbuds here from a company called New Hearer. They're doing amazing things with a CES, so I'd love to talk about those guys a little later on. Talking tech with Ben very soon. Also, Demels is here talking music. We've got Brendan talking entertainment and TV. We've got Di Wilcox with us, a very special eight-year-old that looks after three little girls himself, and he's only eight. And we've got music and we've got comedy as well and Ben thank you for staying here over the weekend because yeah. we've been snowed in obviously we have, have you installed those cameras those cameras are in and we can have a look at them now and you can see where my car used to be it's just been snowed it's in it is so terrible. cold out there terrible. we can't even fly it's out terrible. Qantas won't fly but uh, let's hope you stick around with us as well because otherwise we're gonna have to get Scoot to fly us out it's episode 591 of the couch stick uh, stick around for the next hour it starts now it's showtime on the couch Showtime on the couch You can see it from your house You can see it from your house It's showtime on the couch With Fred And the best in town Yeah, it's showtime on the couch Oh, oh today. Hope you can stick around. Can't wait to talk technology. Who's opening the show today, Ben? Today we've got Decadence opening the show. Beautiful. Here they are. Here you go.
Hey, did someone stop the music? I thought you said not to stop the music. Oh, it doesn't matter. They were wonderful. They, they were, of course, uh, from Wemmer. And uh, at the end of the show, we've got another fantastic act, so please stick around for that one. Now, someone that's uh, been sticking around through all the cold weather, because we're all snowed in here at the couch, uh, is Ben Eilert from, of course, Easy Wireless. That's right, Easy Wireless. Yeah. And fantastic organisation to do with technical stuff, internet support, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Now, today you've got a, a bit of a toy there. What have you got for us? Well, I've managed to have a chat to the nice guys at New Hera. It is a, a company that is based in Western Australia. It's an Australian design product. Mm -hmm. uh, and they managed to crowdfund on Indiegogo the development of the IQ Buds. Now, when you do crowdfunding, that's where people believe in a project that you're doing and they donate $100, $50, yeah. and that money then you can use to develop all of this. That's right, yeah. Fantastic. So the, the goal is with crowdfunding. So Indiegogo had this, uh, they had this project on Indiegogo. The target was $50,000, mm -hmm. and they filled that target within two hours. Oh, wow. So it's currently... That tells you how good it is. It's a fantastic product. So these are Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> Uh, and you, you sync them up to your phone or to your tablet, uh, and they're great. As far so they're as like a hearing aid in a sense, aren't they? Like a wireless hearing aid, and they're very sleek. Yeah, they are, are they quite good? Sleek. Do they work good? They work very well. So I know so you've been trying a, them out. I have been trying them out. They're a noise-cancelling headphone or earbud, yep. and they've actually taken that noise-cancelling technology and given it a bit of a twist, and they've turned it into assistive listening. Wow. So it's kind of a half step to a hearing aid. And can you use them on a plane and things like that, or are they not? They're very... ideal for a plane. And do they pick up a lot of interference, or they're pretty pretty smooth? It's it's Bluetooth LE, which stands for low energy. Okay. So the advantage with Bluetooth LE is that it uses very little power, so you can get a whole heap of listening done on a single charge, and you, you pop them in this little container here, which it's is also awesome. the charger. And it's a, also the charger. Yeah, that, so that's also a charger Fantastic. as well. Fantastic. And you can charge these three times on one charge off this. So that's, that's pretty cool. And they're West cool. Australian, which is wonderful. It's a West Australian company. They've also got offices in San Francisco. And they've been to CES. So that's the Consumer Electronics Expo mm -hmm. for 2017. And they won a whole swag of awards for the innovation. Do we know what they're worth yet? Yes, we do. How much? $299 US. That's not bad. Or $399 in Australia. Do you know, that's not bad, because you buy a good set of ear earphones at yep. about $400, <coughs> aren't they? $450. Yep, $450 so I, I, I did price up uh, a competing product. Oh, wow. And it's $450. Nowhere near as tiny as these. It's actually got little earbuds. So and give me the, the benefits. earbuds come do down to like a, a big like mm. collar, which oh, is the beautiful. battery. And it's bulky. And these are smaller. So, and if you cheaper. had to give me a couple or two or three reasons why these are, are good and better than the, the whole bulky thing, what, what would you say? Well, because they're tiny, they're lightweight. There is a whole bunch of little ear, earbuds here, mm -hmm. which will make sure it fits just about anyone. Beautiful. Uh, and you know, the, the battery life is great. Uh, they're great for assistive listening. I actually use these in a restaurant on their own little restaurant setting, yep. Yep. and I get to hear the conversation going on in the booth next to me. And can you tune in your phone to them? Like, can you? Tune your phone like an iPhone to them so you don't have to actually pick up the phone. Yeah, being Bluetooth, yeah, they do yeah. take calls. Fantastic. So it's a great uh, little hands-free call and kit what are well. they called? They are called the IQ Buds. And can we get more information from your website on those? Uh, from my website, yeah, I'll be getting that sort of information we'll up. But out. if people want to go to mm -hmm. newhera.com, that's N-U-H-E-A-R-A, Dot com. Beautiful. They'll be able to see the whole product. About 350 Aussie dollars. Now, tell me, what's happening with Snapchat? That was in the news last week. Oh, yeah. What's happening with the security issue with kids? It's something that's got a lot of people on edge because mm. nobody likes having location information being shared without their control. The thing is that people can control it as long as you know what you need to do. So, by default, Snap Maps is turned off. You have to go into your settings and, and then and allow friends and or is, everyone to see where you're at. Is this where, Sam, I'm, I'm talking to you on Snapchat, mm -hmm. you're able to know if that map is on, you can tell where I'm talking to you from. So yep. I could be in Morley or, or Bunbury or Melbourne yep. and it yep. would give you the location. Mm -hmm. yep. And this is what people are worried about, obviously, but you can turn that off. You can turn it off. It's actually turned off by default. So it's a good idea if you are using Snapchat to go into your settings yep. and have a look at who can uh, add you as a friend, who can add, um, talk to you and who can see your location. You can go into that little menu item and if you're worried at all, just set yourself to ghost mode, which means you won't be found at all. Fantastic uh, advice. Cyber security, very mm. big with the Defence Department. What's happening with that one? Well, the government's just given the Signals Directorate or basically the people 
responsible for our cyber security on a military level mm -hmm. have actually given them the green flag to become an offensive department. Wow. So now, instead why of Why are they taking it so serious? What's happened that's caused this? There's people out there who are going, what's happened? Why are we worried? Cyber security is a really, really big issue and it's, and it's growing at a frightening rate. So not only do we have people uh, as scammers trying to get uh, us out of our hard-earned money, we're also now seeing some state-backed operations where we're seeing governments mm. trying to disrupt the activities of other countries. Uh, so the latest ransomware that's just got around, which is called NotPetya, mm. uh, that was actually disguised as ransomware where it encrypted all your data and files, but it's actually turned out to be a proper cyber weapon oh, where wow. it goes in and it's disrupting entire operations. So do we need to be aware of this as a public getting involved mm. or is the government trialling this with the Defence Department? Uh, it, it doesn't hurt for us to be aware of what's going on. We really should be aware so we can do the common sense things like making sure our systems are up to date, we've got all of our security patches applied and we don't do dumb things like click on everything like a 12 year old. So as long as we don't do that we should be okay. Uh, this offensive capability is more about going after the bad guys and just effectively blasting them off the web. Fantastic. Now, Easy Wireless can help people if they're concerned about cyber security? Absolutely, yeah. I do a bunch of security talks, so people can book me to talk at small business organisations or little meetings uh, or even big meetings. It doesn't matter. I'm You're a quite, bottle on it. I'm quite happy to talk to anyone about what they need to do to prepare themselves for cyber security. What's your website? My website is easywireless.net.au. That's E-Z-I, wireless.net.au. And just quickly, before we, we have to obviously cut the segment because we're running out of time, oh. 10 years, iPhone, Apple, well done. I know, I know. 10 years ago, the whole situation changed. We had this phone come out with no buttons on it. Everyone lost their minds and you know, it was a great capacitive touchscreen. There was no app store. Uh, it was all very limited in what you, it did. But things Have you had an insight into what they're going to release in October, a new phone? To celebrate 10 years? Uh, have you heard we, any rumours? I've heard rumours we may have an iPhone 7S, mm -hmm. or it could be an iPhone 8, or it could even be called the iPhone Edition. What more can they do to the phone apart from get it to cook for you, clean your car, drive your car, <laughs> uh, wipe our backsides? <laughs> yeah. That would well, be a good one. The, the next big thing is augmented reality. And we've been seeing a lot of scuttlebutt about mm. Apple hiring people who are uh, related with augmented reality. So mm. we'll be seeing things where you can hold a phone up and you can place something on a table and you can move around it. And like it's a 3D a, thing. It's a 3D, a little 3D oh. projection that you look at through your phone. And I believe in October that's all happening. So thank you for coming in today. Thank you for Always bringing in the, the fantastic... Uh, wireless earpods, e earphones, whatever you want to call no, IQ buds. them. IQ Buds. IQ Thank you. Buds. We've got to call them the right thing. Yep. And uh, please check out the website. The website again for you. Easywireless.net.au. That's e -I, wireless.net.au. Thank you very much, Ben. Always Now, fun. stick around because we're going to try and give away a couple of airfares to Singapore. Now, thanks to Scoot, we've been doing this for the last couple of weeks and no one has won. Folks, you have to pick up the phone. Otherwise, what's the point of calling it pick up the phone? Now, we're going to call Anita Nietzsche. And now, she's from Sterling in WA. I think Ben's going to dial the number. We'll hear him dial that. And Anita will get five rings. Now, if she picks up the phone within five rings and says hello to me, she could win those tickets. So let's ring Anita and let's see how we go. Five rings. That's number one. That's two. That's, That's three. three. Yep. Four. Four. Oh, come on. That's five. Oh. Anita. <sighs> Anita, Anita, Anita. You missed out. You're not going to Singapore. And uh, Anita, if you're watching the show, which you obviously do, you're going to win a $50 voucher to Injera House in Mirabuka. But to win that voucher, you need to call us within 24 hours. Please contact us by email or by phone. You'll see our website details on our Facebook page. Later in the show, we're going to call another lucky home viewer and we're going to try and give them away. If we can't give it away, I think uh, Ben and I are going to Singapore. Sounds like a plan. I, like I reckon that. we just let's go. Do it. And let's stuff it. Let's not forget it. Let's not do it anymore. <laughs> That's it for that competition. Thanks to Scoot. If you do want to be part of the competition, it's quite easy. All you've got to do is send me an email. Send it to scoot at thecouch.com.au with your name, address, and phone number, all your details there. Send it to me by email only, folks, and then we will pick random people every week and we will try and give it away. We're going to give it away. Someone will win. Now, this week we're giving away two. If we don't give away, we're going to double it to three, four, and the whole show might be a, a whole hour of Scoot phone calls in a couple of weeks. Wow. So keep trying. Thanks to Scoot. Thanks to Ben. Thanks very much. Easy wireless. Don't forget that, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Catch you then. And uh, thanks to you for watching The Couch. We'll be back after this break. Ooh.
We're talking uh, music with Demelza. See you then. Welcome back to the couch. One of the segments I love most when it's about ABBA, when it's not, I don't really care really, is Demelza Leonard's Talking Music. Welcome well, back. It's a little bit biased, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I, you are one of my favourite when we talk ABBA, but I'll try and pretend you're talking. And then I'm talking. shafted every other time. <laughs> That's pretty much right, actually. And uh, if I had the, I, I don't know if we still got the webcam, but Liam had some amazing vision of what your car is like and what the weather's like outside. So you're probably going to have to stay here overnight. We'll try and get it up. We'll show you because I know the webcam's a little bit unpredictable. What are we doing talking music today? We are talking about oh, there it is. oh, lovely. Your car's underneath all of that. I think it's on the left. Fabulous. What sort of car That's do you going drive? To be fun. Or did you uh, used to drive? We, drive? we used to drive an i30. Oh, Hyundai. We moved up in the world to a Tucson. Oh, you know, it's a, the, there's oh, a baby now. There's so. good deals on Hyundai. I drive a Hyundai as well. They're the best car in Australia. But uh, you won't miss it anywhere under all that snow. <laughs> Clearly not. You won't be able to see it. It's white. Exactly. <laughs> so, Lord, speaking of... Uh... No need to call me Lord. Just stick with Fred. <laughs> So official. <laughs> so she's on top of the charts again. So the follow-up album, Melodrama, to her successful, from a few years mm. back, Pure Heroine, which had Tennis Court and Royals. Uh, she's got the new one with the track Greenlight. She is doing really she well. She is doing so really well. Back I, I like on top her. of the charts, no surprises there. And because Melodrama is doing well, Pure Heroine has come back into the... Uh, charts as well. Oh, so wow. it's sitting around the 40 top What a name, mark. pure heroine. Well, heroine you... in terms of... Oh, um, as in a, a hero. A hero, yeah. Good, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. thinking, oh, Just okay. to back that one up. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a bit controversial. Uh, she will also be touring Australia a little bit later on. Perth maybe as well? Perth has got Beautiful. a show in November uh, and two shows at the Sydney Opera House. Wonderful. Well done, Lord. So doing really you. well. Now, someone else who's been doing really well for quite some time, mm. Sir Paul McCartney. Mm. So, you know, doing well, he's been knighted. It's Look, I'm know. amazed. How old would he be now? In his 70s, uh, I reckon? He'd be getting there. He he's... is a good singer. I, I will say, I actually do like Paul and McCartney. The music, the lyrics, it, there's quality to it. You know, and he's, he's got a good voice, but... Definitely, definitely good voice. But then he's not like a Barnsey or some of no. that. He's Ro looked after his of... voice. He hasn't, he's not a rough singer. No, He's not no. that Rod Stewart type singer, no, is it? No, no. So the vocal cords have been mm. looked after. So he's announced a tour of Australia for the first time in 25 years. So the last time he toured was 1993. He was meant to tour in uh, 2002, I believe, but because of the Bali bombings, mm. he uh, cancelled that Fair tour, um, which is understandable. So when are we expecting him to see him touring? So he's coming down under in December. Mm. Shows in Perth, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney and Auckland. Good news, Paul so, McCartney, eh? Broke again and trying to make money. <laughs> well, I always worry, are they broke? Is it they need to, or are they just wanting to be in the limelight? Well, that gives reckon? me a bit of a segue to mm. the next story. Culture Club will be heading oh, back to Australia. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, chameleon. Yes. Oh, I'm psyched. Do they really know me? You come and go. Really? No, that's not even the word. You come and go. <laughs> Well, there you go. Well, Boy George, Yeah. it's on the back of his, um, the voice judging. So See, I don't like him on the voice. He's a become a bit nasty, hasn't he? Do, well, Fighting I think someone has to play, play the act. role. An and act. let's see, well, he's probably the best person to do it out Delta of that did panel. leak it out that they're all really good friends and it's all about the show uh, being popular. But, Delta. Mm, what do you think Ruining, of her? Mm. Tell us personally, nobody's watching. <laughs> My mum said if it's not something nice to say, don't say yeah, anything look, at all. I'm going to say what I think. I think she was a wonderful actress on Neighbours, but I think she's gone too far to her head and she thinks she's better than I what she is. I think it's a bit too much of an act. Yeah. A bit too much of an act. Her um, perfume's doing well too, I heard. Oh, that's good. Up there with Gina Liano's perfume yep. as well. That's the one. <laughs> well, they will be touring for the third time in 18 months. Yep. So this is why I bring this up. Mm. It is on the back of Boy George uh, being a judge on The Voice. Now, they will be touring Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Newcastle, Wollongong, Canberra, Adelaide and Perth. Mm. All shows apart from Perth will have the Thompson Twins, Tom Bailey, on um, as support. Oh, good. Yeah, good so stuff. a nice little back-to-back -back there. Um, but Perth will get Human League instead. They're so. fantastic as well. Uh, just while we were talking about Culture Club, I don't know why the link, uh, YMCA. Whatever happened to the village people? 
Um, Maybe you could do some research yeah, and find I out. Yeah, I thought didn't us. one of them pass away? I could be very wrong, and I apologise well, I thought to a any lot of them were village people fans. But yeah, I'm pretty sure one of them did. It was but like, anyway. in the navy. Yeah, and you YMCA. Can sail the seven seas. And there was there was another one. Oh, um, it's one of those days. Yeah, we'll remember it. <laughs> we when will. we get old, we'll remember. <laughs> anyway, now from Culture Club mm -hmm. to Steps. Five, six, seven, eight. Remember this one? Five, six, seven, eight. Fred's the best host in town. Oh, yes. I auditioned for this, but the bathers, the yellow ones, the wouldn't fit. Well, this is them in the 90s. They still look the same age. And this age. is them now. Don't they look better now? Younger than what Matured. they were? Matured. And they're working with ABBA. Benny and Bjorn from ABBA. This is their brand new single, which was written by Benny and Bjorn. But you uh, can tell, can't you? If you look away... And it just listen to it. Yes, Adrian, it? Our, our director, editor, was playing this in the studio, and and I heard it, and I said, "Why is Abba back?" And then I looked, and it wasn't Abba. No. And yet it's, it's got the Benny and Bjorn stuff. And that it's got well, it, what a great correlation because they had thank Abba for the music mm. in the late '90s. This is off their latest album, which is the first since 2002. The album's called Tears on the Dance Floor, and this track is doing top 100 in Scotland and the UK, and it's called Story of a Heart. So it's beautiful. I actually you like go. the song, and it almost has that um, Swedish. Accent, it's and I think it's been done on purpose. Just that, well, look, well, I guess also to define the song as opposed to the rest. And you know of what? The all us old, young, ABBA lovers. <laughs> I was talking about you. I didn't want to be rude. Well, not but, the Steps lovers. <laughs> well, Steps is great, but if they sound like ABBA, they are wonderful. If you find any more info about Steps, bring it in. I'll we'll send give you the back catalogue. <laughs> bring me the album. I bet you play Thank ABBA for the music a lot. I do. Though. Thank you for the music, Demelza's it's a nice doing. Melody, isn't it? I love it. I love that song. I, the thing about ABBA, they were amazing for their time because all their music was inspirational. Yeah. You only have to drive around Perth and listen to 6IX or something like that and you hear ABBA and it puts you in a different mm. place. And even look in the 90s when you had uh, Muriel's Wedding, just Correct. how popular. And the, and and the Mamma Mia movie. Yeah. You, you just, whether you love it or hate it, there's a new the generation that loves it. The the dawn of time. Correct. Uh, let's have a look at the top three. Let's have a look at top threes, eh? Coming in at number three, it's Niall Horan with Slow Hands. Another One Directioner, Liam Payne featuring Quavo from Migos, Strip That Down. And at number one, no surprises, Louis Fonsi and Daddy Yankee featuring Justin Bieber with Despacito. This is a good song as well, I don't mind Justin Love Bieber. This song. Love it. People always ask, 24-7, what's your Takeover online? Takeover247.com.au, mm -hmm. yes, the Takeover online radio station. Takeover247.com.au. What night can we listen to? Is it now a podcast it so you is, can listen anytime? No, it is 24-7 online streaming radio station. So if you love R&B, hip-hop and all the genres within that, like Despacito, which is reggaeton, mm. uh, you can check it out, www.takeover247.com.au. And those ABBA lovers, they'll, they'll add some ABBA music in this week uh, with a bit of techno. Have to speak to the boss. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you, Demelz. I know you're a Thanks busy mum. Me. And how is the baby going? He's now how old? He is seven and a half months. He is crawling, standing, and saying mama. So wow. and he's yeah, out doing the well. Front driving your car. You probably under the makes snow. A lot of sense. Thank you, Demelza. <laughs> Wonderful talking music with Demelza. We'll see her in a couple of weeks' time. Yes. Uh, someone that's not uh, thanking us for the music is Nick and Frankie. They are finally back. We haven't seen them all year, and that luck didn't didn't continue. They're back. Here they are. Thank you. Hey Nick, we're back again, mate. We are. How was that introduction by Frederico? Pitch perfect, Frank. Now, Nick, we're here to do the song we didn't finish last time we were here. Well, let's do it. You're ready to do this? I'm always ready. I worry about you, Nick the Noise. Don't worry about me, Frank. I always have to worry about you. So here we go. Maria, Maria, Maria. She loves my toes. What? And we're doing Shoot a Bop, the tragic love song. We are? Yes, of course we are. Oh. Now go along with me here, all right? Okay. On the count of four. Four? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Shoot a bop, 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 Yeah, yeah. This is the story of Smacker and Shirlene, a young Australian couple very much in love. Now one day Smacker and Shirlene were flying across the Bungle Bungles in a helicopter joyride flight. As they flew along, the pilot described the landscape below. All of a 
sudden they flew into a flock of rare and endangered yellow-tailed llama birds. The chopper spiralled out of control, landed unceremoniously in a shallow creek bed. Hey, yeah. Well, that was a tragic ending. No, no, they survived that. Oh. They spent several months in hospital, but they survived that, Nick. Well, if they survived that, yeah. where's the tra tragic ending? Well, it's coming, Nick the Noise. You have to be patient with me, all right? Here we go. Hey, yeah, yeah. Now, several months later, after they got out of hospital, they were in a fixed-wing Cessna aircraft. <laughs> on a skydiving joyride mission. The plane starts to sputter and misfire. We make this up Smack as we go on. <laughs> Smacker became worried. <laughs> Shirlene scream. Instinctively, Smacker grabbed Shirlene and they jumped. <laughs> that was a tragic ending. No, no, they survived that. They deployed their parachutes and they landed safely. Yeah. If they landed safely, where's the tragic ending? Check. Look, if you came to rehearsal every now and then, you might know what's going on in the song. I'm busy on Tuesday night. Yeah, well, rehearsal's Wednesday night. Well, there's your problem right there. I wouldn't come to that either. Would well, you go along with me here? Because I was at rehearsal and I made this crap up. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. You ready? All right, I'm ready. Now, before we go into this next bit, yeah. we're going to do a little musical thing Music. here. Yes, we're going to change keys. What's that? I'm not sure, but I think it's when we sing higher. Now, are you ready to do this? Okay, I'll give it a go. Here we go. <laughs> I like that, Nick. That was good. All right, you read to the last yeah, bit now? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's it. Here we go. Now, one day, Smacker and Shirlene, they were in the great Australian bush. <laughs> <laughs> they were foraging for Australian bush tucker. <laughs> Finally, they got back to their uh, campsite and they cooked up a storm. <laughs> Unfortunately, they ate some poisonous mushrooms and they died. Hold the bus. Hold yeah. the bus. Oh, hang he's on. grabbing my guitar again. They, How many times? They How many ate, times? They ate poisonous mushrooms and they died. That's yes. the anticipated yes. ending. Because I was at rehearsal and I had to come up with something, so that's what I came up that's with. That's dumb. That's not dumb. That's a good ending. It's a dumb ending. But people die from poisonous mushrooms all the time. Not in this song. It's a dumb ending. Well, if you've got a better ending, I'd like to hear it. Cartoon bullets. Oh, not that again. Not cartoon bullets. No. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick the North has lost the plot again. It's good night from Nick. Good night from Frank. Dangerous, those two. Thank you very much. You can now leave the studio in the same condition that you, you came in. Disgusting people. Shooting everybody. Shot half my crew, they did. But they couldn't shoot this guy because he's always on the ball when it comes to entertainment and TV. Brendan Merzen, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We haven't got the TV and, and entertainment yet, but we know you're doing it. Okay. Both. No worries. What's happening? So in TV this week, there are a few new shows starting up Ooh, and also some list. auditions for an old show. So uh, Super Nanny, do you remember that? I do the remember Super Nanny. Is, is that the one where the nanny looks after the kids and then beats the crap out of them if they're naughty? <laughs> oh, I don't know yeah. if there's any beating going on. That might but, um, <laughs> oh, that was the there's European Joe version. Frost, I think, and that was, yeah, so there's an Australian version of Super Nanny. The That's her there. Super Nanny. The um, auditions are on now. Warner Brothers are doing them, but we're not Why sure. Why Super Nanny? Because she's like a superhero right. taking okay. care of the kids, I don't know. Right. But yeah, so we don't know what network it's going to be on, but it's open to anyone from the age of 25 to 60. So Beautiful. That's happening very soon then. So the auditions are on now, yeah. Australian Super Nanny. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. And that's a Foxtel thing. Yep, so another Foxtel. Th oh, we don't know what it is yet, actually. Another thing is Common Sense. So that's a Foxtel the thing. Gogglebox kind of spin off show. So that is going to be started. I've seen the ad. This from week, the makers yeah. of Gogglebox. And the um, cast have been announced. So we've got people on there like a marketing consultant, hairdressers, uh, real estate agent, retirees, butchers, removalists. So, like, a really diverse mm -hmm. group of 
people who are going to started be on Wednesday, so commenting. it started a couple of days ago. I oh, haven't so been last out, week, I've okay. recorded it, but I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to. Not that I recorded illegally, can I say? But I recorded. I'm going to watch it. But I, it's from the makers of Google Box. Yes, it's on the. You app. know that voice. I that voice, the makers of Google Box. The SBS man. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm not having a fit. <laughs> Okay, no one call no one call the ambulance. No. Um, oh, so, that, so that is on Channel Ten as yep. well as Foxtel. It is. Uh, Real Housewives of Sydney, haven't so they caused a storm? Real Housewives of Sydney is apparently actually too mean for the US. So in America yes. they don't like apparently Athena Neither X do and I. Lisa Oldfield. Neither so do Foxtel, I Foxtel um, head guy was saying that they might be getting rid of them. These two were the biggest bitches, can I say. Worse than our bitchin' team. They were horrible. They were nasty. They were they were backstabbers, and I loved them. But they <laughs> it's entertaining. <laughs> it is entertaining. Without them, they they made the show this season. Yeah. I watched it, and I absolutely I had never watched knew anything about these shows. And I watched the one from Melbourne and loved it with Gina Liano, and then I watched this one, and I absolutely fell in love with well, it. Well, I haven't seen any of them, but I did see a bit of them on Goggle Box, where one of them like threw her fishnet yep. looking in clothing the, the into ocean. the water because it deserved to be oh, in the ocean. They but... throw things at each other. They're really nasty. Uh, they're just vulgar, uh, sexually vulgar. They're just incredibly horrible well, it's people. It's too over the top even for America, so they're going to be doing some refining to that. And uh, another show that was on last week was Filthy Rich and Homeless. So that was on SBS over three nights, which was like a social experiment where they had five well-off oh. Australians living on the streets as um, like they were homeless. Oh, okay. And I watched it. I actually thought it was really amazing. Was it good? Yeah, they had, uh, they had Richard Wilkins' son, Christian, on there, Jeff Fennick's daughter, Kayla, and a few other people that are like business owners. And so well-known like people, basically, that aren't yeah. poor and homeless became poor and yeah, homeless. Yeah, so they did rough sleeping and slept on the streets. Mm. They went to a um, shelter. They um, buddied up with a real homeless person, and I actually cried watching it a couple of times because it was really, it mm. was really emotional. It was really, it was real. And I was going to say you cried because it was that bad. I cried because it was, it was sad. It was, you know, SBS. heart. It was heartbreaking. But and you got now. To see why couldn't they've had Lily Chin? SBS. Oh, Lily Chin. Come on, yeah. is it Lily Chan? Oh, I'm not actually. I think Lily Chin. Oh, whatever. Like you know that. the one. Well, the one that reads the SBS news. The one that says, "Good evening." Now we've in the SBS news with the cat in the tree. That one there. She, she wasn't involved in it. Oh, that's she, a shame. I love but, her. <laughs> but um, love her. It was it was it was a really good show, and you can watch it on catch up and things like that. So. And can I tell you, there's a new series of Wentworth just announced. Uh, series six. Okay. Uh, Foxtel have announced that uh, Wentworth for those people who love Prisoner. Series six is starting next year, so they've extended 84 countries around the world. It's been sold to. Wow. I need to get into Wentworth. I haven't seen it yet. Good. Uh, so now we're going to be talking about the entertainment gossip side of things. So we've got some <laughs> interesting stories, starting with Michael Jackson's 19-year-old daughter, Paris Jackson. I love she's, her. She's um, apparently a big fan of Hamish and Andy, so she's been tweeting out Hamish and Andy's well, there has to be one. Uh, videos from their um, gap year shows and also from their new um, Have Life you story watched show. their new True, true no, Stories? I haven't seen it. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't think it's that bad, but I think they've, gone, they've sort of gone... Like, when they were younger... All their comedy was original. I don't find them funny anymore, but that's just me. Well, Paris likes them. So Michael Jackson's daughter likes them. She said she wants uh -huh. to visit Australia. She said her parents got married here in Sydney, so Fair it's enough. a place she really wants to come to. So well, I think if she loves them, she loves them. Good yeah. on her. It's good to have an American person loving an Australian Supporting thing. Australian stuff. Uh, so the second story is Mel B, former Spice Girl, has denied her ex-husband, uh, Stefan Belafonte, uh, any support um, after... Uh, her abuse claim, so she is not wanting to pay him $25,000 a month. Uh, he, he's requesting that money to cover his phone bills, his groceries, his clothing, his rent, and she's saying, well, hang on a minute. 25 grand a month? Yeah, and she's saying, hang on, you moved out of here and took everything with you, and you're mm. staying with other people, so you don't actually Sounds need like that Sounds like you money. were personally involved. Uh, Got a bit of revenge <laughs> there, did you? 25 grand, is that what um, she, she pays him? That's what he wants her to, her, to, her to be paying, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't pay him that much. 25 grand, she can get me for 20. <laughs> well, maybe she'll let her know. Yes, I will. Thank you. I'll get a number off you. Thank and you very much. Well, the, yeah, look, I think that's uh, a bit of a shame. 25 grand's a lot of money for doing nothing every week. Yeah, and... So every month. It's, he, it looks like nothing's been proven yet, but it looks pretty bad the way that he's been treating her for the past 10 years. And what has she been up to? She's just a, a star-rich performer, isn't she? She's a host on... Um, she's a judge on America's Got Talent, and she kind of flies around, but judging on everything. And is she the one that does a Jenny Craig commercials? Yeah. The one that looks really skinny now, because yeah. they've made her skinny? Yeah. Oh, good. She looks good. And Kate Perry. last thing is Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom. You may remember those paddleboarding photos a few mm -hmm. months ago. Uh, Katy Perry has spoken about, about it for the first mm -hmm. time to Kyle and Jackie O because she was here this week. Have you seen the real photo? 
Well, yeah, I think we've all seen I saw the real photo. You'd have to use one of those Google pins to find it. Really? Maybe there it was, was a low quality there. photo you were looking at. I don't know. Where do you get your photos from? <laughs> well, I remember that Justin Bieber and Orlando Bloom were nude on the same weekend. They Obviously, both had a nude off. With you their... have a subscription to something I don't. <laughs> but no, do, do you think it's such a big deal? But they all were talking really. about the size of it on the studio. Well, Katy team. Perry was just saying that they didn't realise that there were paparazzi there, but she wasn't in the mood. That He was trying to get her to strip down as well, but she just wasn't feeling but it. But doesn't day, everybody so. know Katy Perry kissed a girl and liked it? I kissed a girl <laughs> and I liked it. Anyway. Sorry. Yeah. So, well, mm, yeah, there's that. Anything else you want to tell me? No, I have nothing else for you. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much to Brendan Murdson uh, for you. doing his talking TV and talking gossip and entertainment. Wonderful job. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. See you then. Thank you. Thank you. That is Brendan Murdson. He probably won't come back. But uh, <laughs> you'll come back straight after this break because we're giving another chance to somebody else to win a Singapore trip with Scoot. See you then. Welcome back to the couch. It's always a pleasure to have young people who do amazing things in the community. But when they're eight, that's really amazing. And Di Wilcox has got a brand new segment called Real Stories. And here she is with it, with her first guest, Harry. Over to you. Thank you so much, Fred. Hi, Harry. How are you? Good. You're good. Now, Fred just told everyone that you're eight years old. But what Fred didn't tell everybody was that you just turned eight, didn't you? Yes. Did you have a lovely birthday? Yep. That's fantastic. Now, Harry, there's more than just you in your family. Can you tell me who's in your family? So I have my 15-year-old brother, mm -hmm. my two twin sisters. I've got my two-year-old little sister, me, my mum and my divorced dad. Your divorced dad. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, isn't it? Yep. The fact that... You know, sometimes um, we hear of parents divorcing and a yeah. lot of kids get really scared by that. Yeah. And I understand because it can be a bit sad yeah. and you get all sorts of different feelings happening. Uh -huh. And you're here to help other kids understand that those feelings are okay to have. So do you want to tell me a little bit about some of the feelings you had when mum and dad were getting a divorce? Well, I got uh, scared, like you said, nervous and sad. What were you scared about? Oh, um, him never coming back sure. and never seeing him again. How did that make you feel, sweetheart? Nervous, scared. Yeah, because you didn't want that to happen. You still want to see Dad and you still yeah. want to see Mum. Yeah. yeah. And did you see that Mum was a little bit upset? Yeah. How did that make you feel? Sorry for her and, yeah. And you wanted to help Mum? Yeah. So I heard that you became the man of the house and started helping your mum look after your little sisters. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. How do you help mum? Oh, I cleaned up the house, sometimes put them to bed, uh, play with them a lot. You play with them a lot? Oh, that's so good. And was mum upset for a long time? Yes. And how did you manage that? What did you do to help mum? Um... Was that hard? Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. You'd see mum and she'd be... What was mum doing that made Sad, you worry? Sad, uh, crying sometimes. Did you feel like there was anyone you could go and talk to when that was happening? You? Oh, you did come and talk to me. And <laughs> mum, you, yeah. You, did you talk to mum about how you were feeling? That's yeah. really important, isn't it? And I think we want other kids to know that it's important to go and talk to mum and dad and yeah. tell them how you're feeling. You don't have to keep all those feelings inside. No. Because what happens when you go to bed at night and you've got all those feelings inside of you? Um. Was it hard to sleep? Yes, yeah, usually. Usually? Did it make you have some bad dreams and things like yeah. that? Okay. So when you've got all those feelings inside of you, you need an adult that you can trust. Yep. Someone you can talk to. So maybe if other kids can't talk to their mum or dad, then a grandma or a grandpa, but yep. someone you can go and talk to is really important, isn't it? Yep. How did you go at school when all this was happening? Um, at first I was kind of, you know, not really well, but then... Not really well? So how were you feeling when you were at school? Sad. Um, did it make you feel a little bit different from the other kids? Different, yeah. Yeah, did you tell any of your friends what was happening? No, not really. Did you want to tell them or you were a bit worried that they might think something strangely? Uh, I told some of them sometimes, but not usually. And what did your friends say when you told them mum and dad were getting a divorce? Um... Some of them were already, um, some of them had divorced mums and dads too and they said I understand. 
Oh, that's really nice of them. So there are a lot of kids going through this. Yeah. What scared you the most? What was the scariest part? Uh, I would never see my dad again. Okay, and did you talk to mum about that? Yep. And, and mum told you that everything was going to be fine and you would yep. see him again? Yep. Well done. So when you work with your little sisters, do they know what's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're still very young, aren't they? Yeah. So how do you help your sisters understand that they're not seeing Dad very much? Um, I, I say that Dad's sick and he's ha just having a little rest. Oh, that's really sweet of you. Good boy. Are you feeling stronger about things now? Yeah. Okay. What's your plan going forward for you? Um, what's my plan? Um, not sure yet? Not exactly sure, no. It's hard when you're eight years old, right? Yeah. To have, kind of have a plan going forward. But you're yeah. enjoying school. Yeah. What do you want to be when you uh, leave school? Oh, um... A TV presenter? Fred's <laughs> job might Possibly. be Possibly. By that time, Fred's probably looking for a new presenter. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like Fred's job? Yes. Yeah? Do you think you could do a better job than Fred? Yes. Really? What, what do you think he could do to improve? <laughs> Put more Skittles in the cup. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Harry learnt that there are Skittles in your cup, Fred, but he thinks you need more of them. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Uh, I think you would be a fantastic TV presenter. But what is your final message to kids whose perhaps their parents are having a, a divorce and they're really worried about it? What would you like to say to those kids? Um, um, talk to your parents and you shouldn't worry as much. You shouldn't worry as much? What do you do to Anymore. manage your worries, Harry? So that um, other kids know. I talk to mum and I tell her my feelings and... We can write them down as well. Yep. Write them down into a letter and give them to mum. Yep. And always look for an adult that you can trust as well. Uh-huh. Well done. I am so proud of you, Harry, and it has just been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Do you mm -hmm. think you'll come back another time and perhaps we can talk about a different topic together? Probably. Can I give you a big hug because I just think you're adorable? Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. <sighs> oh. And thank you, Fred, for having us. Do you want to say thanks to Fred? Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Harry. Thanks for coming in today. And Harry, did I hear you like cleaning houses? Yeah. Oh, oh perfect. Yes, yes. What so do you charge mine. to clean a house? Yes. I reckon you'd be pretty popular cleaning houses. We'll give you two bucks an hour, okay? A hundred dollars. A hundred. Get over it. I can get Di to do it for a hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, thank you, Wishful Harry. Thinking. And uh, we will have Harry back. A wonderful segment. And thank you very much. Inspirational kids. They are the future. And it's awesome to see kids doing great things. And everybody should be promoting kids doing awesome things as well. Well done. Nice to have you here. Now, we're going to do an awesome thing. We're going to ring this lovely lady. Her name is Nina Prudicki. I think I pronounced it right. But she'll know who she is when we ring her. She's in West Perth here in WA. We're going to give her a chance to win two tickets, a flying Scoot Airlines, to Singapore. Let's dial the number, Ben, and uh, we'll hopefully get her in the five ring. That's one ring. She needs to answer by five. That's two rings. Hello. Hello. Is that uh, Nina? Yes. Nina, this is Fred Mafrica from the Couch TV program on Foxtel. Do you know who we are? Yes, I do. You do know. Nina, do you remember you entered a competition for Scoot? Yes. Do you remember what the code word was? Oh, you, it's pretty easy, word. pretty easy. If it's for Scoot, what would it be? What was, was it for? What, what did you say? Was it Scoot? Oh, of course was it Scoot. Give her a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Nina, Nina, we're giving you, you and a friend, you and a partner, you and a lover, maybe a good time to dump the husband, get someone new. <laughs> Nina, we're giving you two tickets returned to Singapore, flying scoot. You've won. How did I get that? How did, how did you do that? Because you, how lucky are you? Because you are a wonderful person. You picked up the phone when we rang. You're the second person on the show. The other one didn't answer. We've two weeks we've tried to give them away, and you're the first one that's picked up the phone. Thanks to Scoot. Oh my Scoot. goodness! And you, you wouldn't believe where I am. I'm at the top of the mountain. You're at the top of the mountain. I'm in don't the jump. Land in Queensland. But well, whatever you do, don't jump because then I'd have to give away the ticket again, and we wouldn't want that. I know. I'm that. not going anywhere. Where, where, going where, are you, where are you? At the, where are you at the moment? Where did you say I'm you were? I'm in Mullaney. I'm in Montville, Queensland. Oh, beautiful. What are you doing over there? Travelling through the hinterland. Is it nice? And having some time in Noosa, Sunshine Coast. 
Fantastic. Do you know what? We are so happy that you won the prize. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'll send you an email to give you all the details, but do you want to thank Scoot as well because you're going to be taking somebody with you? I've, I've travelled with Scoot many a time to Hong Kong and to Singapore before, so I'm Wonderful. very and, happy to join them again. And do you know who you're taking yet? Um, is it... Oh gosh, there'd be people now. They'll be, they'll be know, queuing be up. Every, favors, I do, think. do you have a partner or a husband? I do have a partner. There you go. So you can and take. And he has been to Singapore recently, and he quite enjoyed it. Oh, he, well, there you he go. Ate some, he actually ate some bat at the hawkers and didn't realise until one of the locals had said. Oh, fantastic! Some bat. A bat. So, yeah, well, he'll that's be lovely. Really excited. Well, it could have been worse. Fantastic. You could have gone to Bali and eaten KFC. dog, but that's okay. <laughs> So I'd rather have bat than dog if I went to Bali. But you know what? Congratulations. Thank you for watching The Couch. It's a pleasure to have you as one of our first winners. Well, actually the second winner, thank so you you've much. lost that, that crown. But uh, thank you very much. We'll be in touch and uh, just plan on going uh, to Singapore very soon with Scoot. Wonderful. And have a wonderful holiday and, and come back safe. Thank you very much. It's lovely to hear your voice. Well done. Thanks, Nina. Now, thank if you you'd, Bye. Bye -bye. if you'd like to be like Nina and pick up the phone, folks, how could you not pick up the phone when we call you? All you have to do is see the email address on the screen at the moment, scoot at thecouch.com.au. Send me your details. Name, address, phone number, BSB and account number. No, you don't need that. <laughs> but you can put it if you want. And if you're the lucky person that we pick every week, thanks to Scoot, you could pick up the phone and go to Singapore, just like Nina. We'll be back with more of The Couch after this coloured spaghetti and more music. See you then. Well done, Nina. Welcome back to The Couch. It always gives me a great pleasure to have games and play games on the show. But today we really are playing games. We have got five brand new games thanks to Goliath Games, which are part of Crown and Andrews. I'm going to show you what they are. They're out right now. So we want you to go to the Crown and Andrews website, crownandandrews.com, and I want you to go and buy them because they're wonderful. Let me show you what they are. These are fl uh, flower fairies. It says here, collect, create, imagine. There they are. Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. Gab Cam. Is it Gabby Cam? There you go. This one here is called the Porter Ball. You actually blow it up and you can take it with you anyway. It's like a soccer ball and it's called Port Ball. Porter Ball. Thank you very much for that one. This one here, Solve the Crime in the Quickest Time. It's part of Cluedo. And thank you for that as well. It's a great game that's out at the moment. And there's about five of these games, all different ones. So please buy them all. Oh, hello there, camera three. This one here sounds like our, our cameraman, Adrian. Look. <laughs> There you go, it's called Squawk, the egg explosive chicken game. That's sad as well. Do you want to hear him again? <laughs> Sounds like him, eh? There you go, so that's that one. And we've got this one here, which I absolutely love. 300 hilarious topics in the game called Things. It comes in a wooden, beautiful box. Lovely gifts if you're going to give them away. And the last one is Yeti in my spaghetti. It's a wonderful game. There it is. It says, hey, get out of my bowl. Now, if you love the games, we can't play with them because we don't want to open them up. But go to crownandandrews.com. Uh, nothing. It's crownandandrews.com. It's on the screen right now. There's those games and more. We'd love you to support them. And uh, thank you very much for sending those in. We've got about 30 of these games, and I know exactly what we're going to do with them, and I'll tell you about it after this next segment. Time now to talk coloured spaghetti with our bestest, bestest mum and teacher. Her name is Michelle Varley. Over to you. Thank you, Fred. Hello and welcome everyone to this episode of Coloured Spaghetti, the show where we encourage you to spend time with your kids and give you some really great activities to do with them. So today we're going to look at art therapy. Now, that sounds a bit alternative, but don't run away. It's actually really cool. First of all, let's introduce these wonderful kids. Okay, over here we have, what's your name? I'm Savannah and I am 13. Hi Savannah, it's lovely to have you here today. And what's your name? I am Mackenzie and I'm 11. Mackenzie and Mackenzie is 11. Welcome to Coloured Spaghetti. I think you were very excited about coming on today, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, what's your name? My name's Jennifer and I'm 11. I'm 11 years old, welcome. And finally we've got... Hi, I'm McKinley and I'm 12. Hi McKinley, thanks so much for coming on Coloured Spaghetti today. We've also got two helpers today, Caitlin and Lily are going to help in the activity. 
Um, I'd just like to make a quick shout out to Mel at Chloe's Workwear in Clarkson, who gave me a fantastic deal on the embroideries on their coloured spaghetti t-shirts. She's always been a great supporter of coloured spaghetti. And also to Nicole Marson from Ardross Tiles, who donated the t-shirts for all the kids to take home. So you two guys are awesome. All right, now art therapy is really just about you giving you your child that? the opportunity to make sense of their world through their own creativity. Now, creativity is just another word for self-expression. Um, not, not everyone is into art. Your child might prefer to express themselves through music or dance or even technology or construction toys. But by encouraging their creative interests, we're not only offering them an outlet for their feelings, but we're also building them from the inside out, inspiring innovative thinkers and problem solving. Now, that's not to mention the time and value that you're giving to them, so it's all really great. Um, I'd like to thank Kate Andrews here from Little Art Lab, who gave me some background to art therapy and, and the activities. Check out her Facebook page, Little Art Lab. She runs some fantastic classes for preschoolers in Perth. So let's have a look at this activity. Um, Adrian, would you like to come and have a look and see what the kids are doing? This activity is called Mirror Art. Now we've got two leaders. Put your hand up if you're a leader. Yes, the leaders. Put your hand up if you're a copier. Yes, you guys are the copiers. So the copiers have to um, do everything the leaders are doing. Now, what this in fact does, it allows the child to be the leader, which makes them feel really important and it makes their art valued. Um, it also gives you, and appreciated, what a good word. It also gives you the opportunity to learn what your child means by every single mark, line and dot that they're making on the page. You will be amazed at the thought processes that go behind each picture. So let's have a look and see. Mackenzie, what have you actually drawn here? Shh, tell me about your I've beautiful drawn picture. I've a dog house with an elevator and lots of different levels. That is one lucky dog. To have an elevator, fantastic. That's I asked, really a lot. I, I actually asked them to draw their favourite animal. Mackenzie said she was going to draw her favourite animal in its favourite place. My favourite place. In your favourite place. So I've drawn a person and then I'm going to draw a fruit recipe because she's going to throw a frisbee around. Fantastic. And what's, what are these lines here? Oh, they're the grass. Grass, fantastic. I love the way I you've done that. I can't draw proper grass like a... Ah, oh, now that's an important that's an important point to make because you know what I think I think there is no such thing as Plus, proper grass, grass or proper anything. Some... Actually, it's however yeah. you want to draw it on the picture. Okay, all right. Let's have a look at Danica. Ooh, very different picture. Can you tell us about your picture? Well, so I have my cat with the like stripes, and then we have the like path walking away thing. Yeah. And then we have the road, and then I'm going to draw like some buildings up here for like some city walls. Amazing. And then I'm, yeah, and I'm going to put like two trees there, and I'm going to put like a moon up there. I love that. And how is your copier doing? Is she copying you well? Yep. Yes, she's done a good job. Mm -hmm. good. good. I love the way that by having somebody else as a copier is giving um, the power of choice and leadership to the child. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you there and we're going to bring in the other activity if we I can, girls. Well, I tell you what, we'll finish it afterwards, shall we? Because we're going to do that painting now. Yeah. The next um, activity yeah, we've got is called hand decoration. And we're going to have one pair painting and another pair sticking. So this activity is all about fun. It's all about being creative and it's about learning to live in the moment with your child. Um, try really hard not to pressure or even guide your child, just allow them the power of choice. Okay, you've got the paint. Savannah, you're gonna have your hands out and you go for it. You decorate those hands however you want to decorate them. And you do the same with using egg boxes here. I'm not a big fan of plastic. These things can just be thrown away straight after. 
So while they're having a go at decorating those hands, let me tell you a few do's and don'ts about art therapy. Don't rush it, allow your child to live in the now, don't set rules, allow them to interpret things in their own way and remember that things don't have to look like a photograph of, of, of it. Um, never say that doesn't look like a tree or that doesn't look like a person. Allow them just to interpret how they want to. Um, in fact, Mackenzie earlier, can you remember what you said you told me? I think what you're trying to say is... Yeah. And it all comes from, oh, from the heart. And it comes from the heart. I couldn't have put it better it's myself. True. That's right. Always do be encouraging and do be respective of their art. Um, and remember to tell them that everyone's art is unique. There is no such thing as a bad artist. Okay, as these guys make their hands beautiful, um, just to sum up, is there any set age for art therapy? There is never a set age for spending quality time with your kids. Like just do it. That's what Coloured Spaghetti is all about. I'd like to thank these gorgeous kids for joining me today. I'd like to thank Fred and the Couch for having me. A special thanks today for two people who have supported me all the way backstage, all throughout, Anita and Lily. You two are awesome. Um, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to visit our Facebook page and like and follow it. And I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you, Michelle. Another fantastic coloured spaghetti. We'll have another one in the next month, but well done to the kids. Thank you for coming in. And thank you to all those people who support them as well. Now, as a very special gesture, Thanks to Goliath Games and Crown and Andrews, we'd love to give the kids the games. We're going to give every single kid on that set over there the games. Look at them. They're enjoying them. They're wonderful games. I hope you love them, kids. There's five games each for the kids. That's 25 games. And uh, we'll give you these ones as well. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you to the kids. Thanks to Crown and Andrews. And we haven't got any time to play the Wemmer music clip at the end of the show. The kids uh, were standing there ready to go, but we had to use it for coloured spaghetti. So we'll get them in next week. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Don't forget, watch Foxtel. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by a Porto Chicken. Fresh, not frozen. Grilled, not fried. Crown and Andrews Board Games. Fun for the whole family. And Scoot Airlines. Get out of here with Scoot.